A Fairy Song by William Shakespeare Of a hill, of a dale, through a bush, through a brier, of a park, of a pale, through flood, through fire, and a wonder everywhere, swifter than the moon's fear, and a surf of fairy queen to draw orbs upon the green, the cowslips tall, the pensioners be, and the cold coat spots you see, those be rubies, fairy favours, and those freckless lips for savours. I must go seek some dewdrops here, and hang a pearl on every cowslip's ear. Against my love shall be as I am now, by William Shakespeare. Against my love shall be as I am now, if time's injuries hand crushed in our wound, and ours have drained his blood to fill his brow with lines and wrinkles, and his youthful morn half travelled unto age's steepy night. And all of us beauties who have now his king, are vanished, or vanished out of sight, stealing away the treasure of his spring. For such time will I now fortify against confounding age cruel knife, which shall never cut from memory my sweet life's beauty or my lover's life. As beauty shall in these black lines be seen, and they shall live, and he in them still green. Against the time, if ever the time comes, William Shakespeare. Against the time, if ever the time come, and I shall see thee frown on my defects, when as the love have cast his utmost sum, called to that ordered by advice respects. Against the time thou shalt strangely pass, and scarcely greet me with that sun thine eye, and love converted from the thing I was, shall reasons find of settled grey. Against the time do I ensounds me here, within the knowledge of mine own desert, and with my hand against myself uprear, to guard the lawful reasons on my part, to leave poor me who has the strength of loss, since why to love I can allege no cause. And wherefore with infection should he live? William Shakespeare. And wherefore the perfection should live with his presence, grace, and pity, that sin by him advantage should achieve and lace itself with his society. I shall force painting intimate his cheek and steal that semen of his living cue. I shall put beauty indirectly seek roses of shadow, since his rose is true. Where should he live no nature bankrupt is, like added of blood to blush for living veins, which we have not square now but his, a proud of many, lives upon his gains? Or him she stores, to show what wealth she had, in days long since, before these lusts are bad. A lust is true, I have gone here and where, by William Shakespeare. A lust is true, I have gone here and where, and myself a mod laid to the view. God mine, own thoughts, so cheap, what is most dear, made old offences of affections new. Was true it is that I have looked on truth as cans and strangely. But by all above, these blanches gave my heart another youth, and worse as is proof be my best of love. And all is done, if what shall have no end, mine appetite I never more will grin, or new approve to find an older friend, a god at love, to whom I am confined, when give me welcome, next my heaven the best, even to thy pure and most most loving breast. All the world's a stage, by William Shakespeare. All the world's a stage, all the men and women merrily players, they have the exits and the entrances, and all men in this time plays many parts, as acts being seven ages. At first the infant, mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, then the whining schoolboy with his satchel and shining morning face, creeping like snail unwillingly to school, and then the lover, sighing like furnace, with a woeful ballad made to his mistress's eyebrow, with a soldier full of strange oaths and bearded like the bread, jealous and honour, sudden quick and cruel, seeking with above reputation even in the cannon's mouth. And then the justice, and fair on belly with gold cap and lined, with eyes severe and beard of formal cut, full of wise sores and modern instances. And so he plays his part. The six age shifts into the lean and silver pantaloon, with spectacles on nose and pouch on sight, his youthful loose will save the world to wide, full shrunk shank, and his big manly voice turning again toward childish treble, pipes and whistles in the sound. Last scene of all that ends the strange, eventful history, a second childishness and me oblivion, sans teeth, sans eyes, sans taste, sans everything. As an unperfect actor on the stage, by William Shakespeare. As an unperfect actor on the stage, who with his fears put beside his part, or some fierce thing replete with too much rage, whose strange abundance weakens his own heart, so I for fear of trust forget to save the perfect ceremony of love's read, and in mine own love's strength seem to decay, or charge with burden of mine own love's mind. I let my books be when the eloquence and dumb presages of my speaking breast, who plead for love and look for recompense, more than the ton, but more have more expressed. I learn to read what silent love have writ, the heel of ice belongs to love's fine wit. Be wise as thou art cruel, by William Shakespeare. Be wise as thou art cruel, 
Do not press my hand tight patience with too much disdain. Lest so I lend me words and words express by men of my pity wanting pain. If I may teach you wit, better it were, more not to laugh, yet laugh to tell me so. As testy sick men and their deaths be near, no news but hell for the physicians know. For if I should despair, I should go mad, and my madness might speak ill of thee. Now this arresting world is grown so bad, my slenders by mad ears, believed be, but I may not be so, nor will be light. Bear thine eyes straight, for the proud heart go white. Blow, blow the winter wind, by William Shakespeare. Blow, blow the winter wind, for art not so unkind as man's ingratitude. A doof is not so keen, because for art not seen, all of her breath be rude. Hey ho, sing, hey ho, unto the green holly. Most friendship is faint, most loving were folly. And hey ho, the holly, whose life is most jolly. Freeze, freeze for bitter sky, the tars not bite so nigh as benefits for good. Though the, the waters warm, my sting is not so sharp as a friend remembered not. Hey ho, sing, hey ho, unto the green holly. Most friendship is feigning, most loving were folly. Then hey ho, the holly, this life is most jolly. I do thy worst to steal myself away, by William Shakespeare. I do thy worst to steal myself away, for to him of life or other should mine. And live no longer than my love will stay, for it depends upon that love of mine. I need her not to fear the worst of wrongs, and the least of them my life hath end. I see a better state to me belongs, and with which on my humour doth depend. O canst not vex me with inconstant mind, since that my life on the revolt of lie. And what a happy title do I find, happy to have a love, happy to die. And what so blessed fair that fears no blood, though may be false, yet I know it not. But wherefore do not you a mightier way, by William Shakespeare. But wherefore do not you a mightier way make war upon this bloody tyrant time, and fortify yourself in your decay, with means more blessed than my born rhyme? Now stand you on the top of happy hours, and many maiden gardens yet unsaid, a virtuous wish would be your living flowers, much liker than your painted counterfeit. So should the lines of life that life repair, which whiz, time's pencil, or my pupil pen, neither in inward worth nor outward fare, can make you live yourself in eyes of man. To give away, yourself keeps yourself still, and you must life drawn by your own sweet skill. Canst thou cruel, say I love thee not, by William Shakespeare. Canst thou cruel, say I love thee not, and I against myself of thee partake. Do not think on thee when I forgot, I am of myself all turn for thy sake. Who hate to think that I do call my friend, on whom frowns for that I do fawn upon. Now for lures to me, do I not spend revenge upon myself at present moan? What merit do I in my self-respect, that is so proud for service to despise, when all my best to worship by defect, command of the motion of thine eyes? But love hate on, for now I know thy mind. Those that can see, thou lovest, and I am blind. Farewell, woe are too dear for my possessing, by William Shakespeare. Farewell, thou art too dear for my possessing, and like enough, who knows thy estimate, the charter of her worth gives re-releasing, the bonds and we are all determinate. For how do I hold thee but by thy granting, and for what riches were my deserving? The cause of his forgift in me is wanting, and so my patent bag again is serving. Why self thou gavest, my own worth then not knowing, or me to whom thou gavest it else mistaking? So the great gift upon this prison growing comes home again on better judgment making. As if I had thee as a dreamed of letter, and sleep a king, but waking no such matter. Fear no more, by William Shakespeare. Fear no more the heat of the sun, nor the furious wind is rages. O worldly task has done, how much gone and turn the wages. Golden leads and girls all must, as chimney sweepers come to dust. Fear no more the frown of the great, or pass the turn stroke. Care no more the clove and eat, to be the reed as the yoke. The sceptre, learning, physic, must all follow with and come to dust. Fear no more the lightning flash, nor the old red thunderstone. Fear not slender, sense a rash, thou hast finished joy and moan. All lovers young, all lovers must, consign to thee and come to dust. No exorcism harm thee, nor no witchcraft charm thee. Ghost and light forbear thee, nothing ill come near thee. Quiet consumption have, we known be thy grave. For shame, deny that thou best love to any. By William Shakespeare. For shame, Deny that thou be love to any, who thyself art so unprovident. Grant, if thou wilt, or beloved of many, and if thou none lovest, is most evident. Thou art so possessed with murderous hate, 
that gains myself or sticks not to conspire, seeking with beauteous roof to ruinate, which to repair should be thy chief desire. Or change my thought, that I may change my mind. Shall hate be fair lodged then, gentle love? Where is thy presence as gracious and kind? Or to thyself at least kind-hearted proof? Make thee another self, for love of me, the beauteous day may live and vine of thee. From fair creatures we desire increase, by William Shakespeare. From fair creatures we desire increase, that with a beauty the rose might never die, but as a ripe I shall but tiny cheese, as tender her might be as memory. But though contracted to wine on bright eyes, feeds the light's flame with self-substantial fuel, making a thermon where bundance lies, herself a foe to her sweet self to cruel. A woe that art now world's fresh ornament, and only herald of a gaudy spring, within thine own but barriers thy content, and tender churl makes waste in the garden. Pity the world, else with gluten be, to eat the world's dew with a grave and wee. From you have I been absent in the spring, by William Shakespeare. From you have I been absent in the spring, and broke by April, dressed in all his trim, have put a spirit of youth on every thing, and have he set a laugh and leap for them. Yet no the lace of birds, nor the sweet smell of different flowers and odors and in hue could make me any summer story tell, or from the proudly pluck them where they grew. Not that a wonder of the lilies white, or praise the deep vermilion in the rose. They were but sweet, but figures of delight, drawn after you, your pattern of all those. Yet seemed it winter still, and you away, as if your shadow, I the feast play. Full seven five by William Shakespeare. Full seven five where father lies, of his bones a coral made. Those are pearls of his eyes. Nothing of him that thou fate, but thou suffer a seed change into something rich and strange. See them hourly ring his knee. Ding dong. Hark now hear them. Ding dong bell. Full many a glorious morning have I seen, by William Shakespeare. Full many a glorious morning have I seen, flatter the mountain tops with sovereign eye, kissing with golden face the meadows green, gliding pale streams of heavenly alchemy. Anna permit the pale clouds to ride with ugly wreck on his celestial face, and the fallen world of visage hide, stealing unseen to waste the fist's grace. Even so my sun will early morn did shine, of all triumph and splendor on my brow, while our luck, he was but one hour mine, region cloud of master for me know. It him for with my love, nor would it disdaineth. Sons of a world may stay when heaven's sun staineth. Hark, hark, the lark, by William Shakespeare. Hark, hark, the lark at heaven's gate sings, and furby skins and rise, as deeds the water of our springs on shellicked flowers that lies, and winging merry buds begin to offer golden eyes. Of everything that pretty is, my lady sweet arise, arise, arise. How can my muse one subject to invent, by William Shakespeare? How can my muse one subject to invent the water's breath that pours into my verse by an own sweet argument to excellent for every vulgar paper to rehearse? I give thyself a thanks, if all to me worth puzzle stand against my sight, both to them that cannot write to we, and what myself does give and mention light. Be well the tenth muse, ten times more in worth than those old nine the framers invocate, and he that calls on we, let him bring forth eternal numbers to a live long date. If my slight muse to please these curious days, the pain be mine, but mine should be the praise. How careful was I when I took my way, by William Shakespeare. How careful was I when I took my way, each trifle and let us bars to frost, that to my use it might unuse it stay from hands of falsehood and sure wards of trust. And a vow to whom my jewels trifles are, was worthy comfort, now my greatest grief, for best of dears that mine only care, I left the prey of every vulgar thief. We have not locked up in any chest, save where thou art not, for I feel thou art, by whom the gentle closure of my breast, who wins the pleasure, thou mayst come and part. Even thence it will be stolen, and if he for truth proves feverish for price so dear. How heavy do I journey on the way, by William Shakespeare. How heavy do I journey on the way, and what I seek my very travels end, to have teach that cause and that repose to say, was father miles are measured from thy friend. The beast that bears it, tired with my woe, floats dully on, to bear that weight in me, as if by some instinct wretched it know, as a rider love not speed being made for me. The bloody spur cannot provoke him on, but sometimes anger frushed into his height, which heavenly answers with a groan, or shout to me when spurring to his sight. A wet same groan, to have put this in my mind, or realized onward, and my joy behind. How like a winter hath my absence been, by William Shakespeare. How like a winter hath my absence been for we the pleasure of a fleeting year. 
what freezing hath hath felt, what dark days seen, what our December's bareness everywhere. And yet this time removed was summer's time, the teeming autumn, big with rich increase, being the wanton burden of the prime, like withered wombs after the Lord's cities. Yet this abundant issue seemed to me but hope of orphans and unfeathered fruit, for some and displeasures wait on we and bow away, that the birds are mute, and if they sing, tis with so dull a cheer, that leaves look pale, dreading the winter's near. How often, woe, well, my music, music placed, by William Shakespeare. How oft, when woe, well, my music, music placed, upon the blessed grave, wood whose motion sounds, with her sweet fingers, and were gently swaced, with all the concord that mine ear confounds. Do any of those jacks that nimble leap, to kiss the tender inward of her hand, whilst my poor lips, which should that harvest reap, at her woods boldness, by their blushing stand. To be so tickled, they would change their state, a situation with those dancing chips, at whom their fingers walk of gentle gait, making dead wood more blessed than living lips. And saucy jacks, so happy are in this, give them their fingers, me their lips to kiss. How sweet and lovely does thou make the shame, by William Shakespeare. How sweet and lovely does thou make the shame which, like a canker and a fragrant rose, does spot the beauty of a budding name. Oh, and what sweets does thou my sins enclose, the tongue that tells the story of thy days, making leisure with comments on thy sport, cannot dispraise, but in kind of praise, naming thy name, blesses an ill report. Of what dimension hath those wisest God, which for the habitation chose of we? Her beauty's veiled of cover the blood, and all things turn to fear that eyes can see. Take heed, dear heart, of this large privilege, the hardest knife ill-used that of loose's edge. If the dull substance of my flesh were fought, by William Shakespeare, if the dull substance of my flesh were fought, injuries, distances should not stop my way. For when despite of space I would be brought, from limits far remote, the voters stay. No matter when although my foot had stand, when the farthest earth remove from we, for nimble fort and jump of sea and land, as soon as think the place where he would be. But ah, fort kills me that I am not fought, to leap large lengths of miles and world gone. But that is so much of earth and water wrought, I must at ten times leisure with my moan, receiving naught by elements so slow, but heavy tears, badger survivors woe. If there be nothing new, but that which is, William Shakespeare. If there be nothing new, but that which is, hath been before, or our brains beguiled, which labouring for an invention, be a miss, the second birth of a former child. I would record could with a backward look, even of five hundred courses of a son, show me an image in some antique book, since mind at first in character was done. I might see what we old world could say to this composed wonder of your frame, whether we are mended, or were better say, or whether the revolution be the same, as sure the wits of former days, the subject words have given admiring praise. If I also wife my well contented day, the William Shakespeare. If I also wife my well contented day, and it shall death my bones if dust shall cover, I should the fortune once more array, these poor root lines of my deceased lover, compare with the battering of the time, and what will be outstripped by heavy pen, reserve him for my love, not for the rhyme, exceeding by the height of happier men. The wind would save me but with loving thought. Had my friend's muse ground with his growing age, and he birth and this his love had brought, to march in ranks of better equipage, but since he died and pouts better proof, whereas for the style I read, his voice love. It is for fear to wet the widow's eye, by William Shakespeare. It is for fear to wet the widow's eye, and what consumes by self and single life, a foe issueless should hope to die, a world will wear me like a makeless wife. Will it be the widow and still weep, and though no form of fear has left behind, and every private window well may keep the children's eyes, husband shape and mind. Look what an unthrift in the world of spend shifts but its place, but still the world enjoys it. A beauty's waste half in the world and end, and kept unused, the user so destroys it. No laugh toward others in the bosom sits, and himself such murderous shame commits. It is very well the image should keep open, by William Shakespeare. Is for will thy image should keep open my heavy eyelids to the very night? Does thou desire my slumber should be broken, while shadows like to we do mock my sight? Is the spirit that thou sensed from we, so far from home into my deeds to pry, to find our shames and idle hours in me, to scope into new of thy jealousy? Or oh, now thy love of how much is not so great. Is my love that keeps my eyes awake, my now true love, but doth my rest defeat, to play the watchman ever for thy sake? For we watch I, whilst voters wake elsewhere, 
for me for off with others all to knee. Let me confess that we two must be twain, by William Shakespeare. Let me confess that we two must be twain, although undivided loves are one. So shall those bloods that do with me remain, without the help we may be born alone. And no two loves there's but one respect, though no life's a separate spite, which both alter not love's sole effect, yet doth it steal sweet hours from love's delight. I may not ever more knowledge be, lest by bewailed, killed should do be shame, no wolf of public kindness honour me, unless, or take with honour from my name. But do not so, I love you in such sort, as thou being mine, mine is my good report. Let not my love be called idolatry. By William Shakespeare. Let not my love be called idolatry, nor my beloved grief is an idle show, since all alike my songs and praises be to one of one, still such and ever so. Kind is my love today. Tomorrow kind, the constant the one is excellence. If for my worst the constancy confined, one thing expressing leaves out difference. Fair, kind and true, as all my argument. Fair, kind and true, varying to other words, and this change is my invention spent. Three themes in one, which run the scope of thoughts. Fair, kind and true, have often lived alone, which creature now never kept seat in one. Let those who are in favour with their stars by William Shakespeare. That those who are in favour with their stars of public honour and proud titles boast, whilst I, unfortunate of such triumph bars, and looked for joy in their honour most. Great princes, favourites, with fair leaves spread, but as the marigold at the sun's eye, and in themselves their pride lies buried, for at the throne they in the glory die. The painful warrior, famous for fight, after a thousand victories once foiled, as with a book of honour raised, quiet, and not rest for God for which he toiled. And happy I that laugh and am beloved, where I may not remove nor be removed. Like as to make our appetite more keen, by William Shakespeare. Like as to make our appetite more keen, with eager compounds we are played urge, as wind or melodies unseen, we seeking to shun sickness when we perch. Even so being full of your ne'er cloying sweetness, to be the sauce that the frame of feeding, and sick of wealth or fond of kind of meatness, to be diseased earth that there was true needing. As policy and love to anticipate, the ills that were not grew to false assured, and brought to medicine a healthful state, which rank of goodness would by ill be cured. Whence they learn and find the lesson true, drugs poison him that so felt sick of you. Love is my sin, and thy dear virtue hate. By William Shakespeare. Love is my sin, and thy dear virtue hate. Hate of my sin, grounded on sinful loving. Our wealth of mine, compare the wine on state. And we should find it merits not reproving, or if it do, not from those lips of wine that have profound their scarlet ornaments and sealed false bound of love as oft as mine, robbed of us beds with revenues of their rents. Be it lawful, I love thee as for love's woes, whom thine eyes woo as mine importune we. Root pity in thy heart, that when it grows, the pity may deserve to pitied be. If thou dost seek to have what thou dost hide, thy self example mayst for be denied. Love is too young to know what conscious is, by William Shakespeare. Love is too young to know what conscious is, yet who knows that conscious is born of love. When gentle cheater, urged not my amiss, is guilty of my faults, my sweet self proof. A vow betraying me, I do betray the nobler part of my gross body's treason. My soul doth tell my body, that he may triumph in love. Flesh stays no farther reason, but rising at my name, doth point of we as his triumphant prize. Proud of his pride, he is content thy poor drudge to be, to stand in thy affairs, fall by thy sight. No want of conscience, hold at that I call, a laugh, for whose dear laugh I rise and fall. When I and heart I had a mortal war, by William Shakespeare. When I and heart I had a mortal war, how to divide the conquest of thy sight. When I my heart, thy picture sight would bar, my heart when I the freedom of it right, my heart doth plead that thou in him dost lie. A close that never pierced with crystal eyes, but the defendant doth it plead deny, and says in him the fair appearance lies. The sight was tideless and paled, a quest of thoughts all tenants to the heart, and that the verdict is determined, the clear eyes moiety and the dear heart's part, as thus my eyes at you is by outward part, my heart's right by inward love of heart. Music to hear, or hears the music sadly, by William Shakespeare. Music to hear, or hears the music sadly, Sweets with sweets woe not, joy delights and joy. Alas the wit which woe receives not gladly, or its receives of pleasure thine annoy. 
If a true concord of well-tuned sounds, where unions married, do offend mine ear, I do but sweetly chit we, or confounds, and sing in as the parts of the devotion's beer. Mark how one string, sweet husband to another, strikes each and each by mutual ordering, resembling sire and child and hairy mother, or all in one, one pleasing note to sing, with speech a song being many, seeing one, sings with to we, or sing with proof none. My love is as a fever, longing still, by William Shakespeare. My love is as a fever, longing still, for wit which longer nurseth a disease, feeding on what which doth preserve the ill, the uncertain sickly appetite to please. My reason to physician to my love, angry when his perceptions are not kept, half left me, and I desperate no proof desire is death, which physic did accept. Past cure I am, no reason is past care, and frantic mad with ever more unrest. My thoughts and my discourse as madmen's are, at random from the true vein expressive. For I have sworn be fair, and fawned be bright, who art as black as hell, as dark as night. My love is strengthened, for more wicked seamen, by William Shakespeare. My love is strengthened, for more wicked seamen. I laugh not less, or less for show appears. But love is merchandised, with rich esteeming, the honest thunder of publish everywhere. Our love was new, then but in the spring, when I was wont to greet it with my lace, as Philemon in summer's front of sing, and stops pipe and grow for riper days. Not that the summer is less pleasant, no, than when her mournful hymns that hush the night, but that wild music burthens every bow, and sweets grown calm and loose their dear delight. Therefore, like her, sometimes hold my tongue, because I would not dull you with my son. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun, by William Shakespeare. My mistress' eyes are nothing like the sun, coal is far more red than her lips red. If snow be white, when the breasts are done, if hairs be wires, black wires grow on her head. I have seen roses damasked red and white, but no such roses see her in her cheeks, and in some perfumes is there more delight than the breath from my mistress' reeks. I love to hear her speak, yet will I know with music half a far more pleasing sound. I grant I never saw a goddess go, a mistress when she walks streets on the ground. And yet, by heaven, I think my love as rare as any she belied, the faults compare. No longer mourn for me when I am dead, by William Shakespeare. No longer mourn for me when I am dead, when you shall hear the surely silent bell give warning to a bird that I am fled, who is well world, a vile as worms to dwell. And if you read this line, remember not the hand that writ it, for love you so, with I and your sweet thoughts would be forgot, and thinking on me when should make you woe. And if I say you look upon this verse, and I perhaps compound it and with clay, do not so much as my poor name rehearse, my little love even with my life decay, lest the wise world should look into your moan, and mock you with me after I am gone. No more be grieved at that which woe has done, by William Shakespeare. No more be grieved at that which woe has done, Roses have fawns, and silver fountains mud. Clouds and eclipses stain both moon and sun. Love's canker lives in sweetest bud. All men make faults, and even I in this authorized by trespass of compare, myself corrupting, selving by a miss, excusing my sins more than my sins are. For to find a sense for fault I bring in sense, that worse party is my advocate, and against myself a love of commends. Such a civil wars in my love and hate that I a necessary needs must be to wed sweet thief which surely robs from me. Now time, or should not boast that I do change, by William Shakespeare. Now time, or shall not boast that I do change. The pyramids built up with newer might, to me are nothing novel, nothing strange. They are but dressings of the former sight. Our dates are brief, and therefore we admire our daughter's voice upon us that is old. I'd rather make them born to our desire, and think what he before have heard them told. Religiousness and we are both defy, but wandering at the present, not the past. For the records, a receipt of lie, made more or less by their continual haste. We said to woe, and we shall ever be, and we true despite, by skiffing will be. Not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, by William Shakespeare. Not from the stars do I my judgment pluck, yet methinks I have astronomy. But not to tell of good or evil luck, of plagues, or deaths, or seasons' quality. Nor can a fortune of brief minutes tell, pointing to each as thunder, rain and wind, or save the princess if it shall go well, they oft predict that I in heaven find. And from one eyes my knowledge I derive, and constant stars, and when I reach such art as truth and beauty shall together thrive, and from myself to store where woods convert. Or else of thieves I prognosticate, my end is truths and beauty's doom and date. Not marble, nor the gilded monuments, but William Shakespeare. 
Not marble, nor the gilded monuments of prince shall not live of his powerful rhyme. A you shall shine more bright and wreathe contents than unswept stone be measured with sluttish time. When wasteful war shall statues overturn, and broils the root out of the work of masonry, no master's sword, no war's quick fire shall burn the living record of your memory. Against death and all oblivious enmity shall you pace forth. Your prey shall still find room even in the eyes of all posterity that were this world out to the ending doom. So tell the judgment that yourself arise, you live in this and dwell in lover's eyes. Not my own fears, nor the prophetic soul, William Shakespeare. Not my own fears, nor the prophetic soul, the wide world, dreaming on things to come, can yet the lease of my true love control, suppose this fond of it to be confined to. The mortal moon hath her eclipse endured, and the sad augurs mock their own passage. In certainties no crown themselves assured, and peace proclaims all of endless age. Now with drops of his most balmy time, my love looks fresh, and death to me subscribes, since spit of him I live in this poor rhyme, while he insults so dull in speech his stripes, and one wish shall find the monument, and turns crests and tombs of brass are spent. Or call not me to justify the wrong, by William Shakespeare. Or call not me to justify the wrong, but thy unkindness lays upon my heart, warm me not with thine eye, but with thy tongue. Use power of power, and slay me not by art. Tell me for lovest elsewhere, but in my sight, dear heart forbear to glance when I aside. What needs the wound, with cunning, when thy might is more than my oppressed defence can bite? Let me excuse thee, or my love well knows the pretty looks have been mine enemies, and wherefore from my face she turns my foes, that they elsewhere might adart their injuries. Yet do not so, but since I am near slain, kill me outright with looks and rid my pain. Or from what power hast of his powerful might, by William Shakespeare? Or from what power hast of his powerful might, if in Sophienti my heart to sway, to make me give a light to my true sight, and swerve it brightness doth not grace the day? Whence hast of his becoming of things ill, that in the very refuse of thy deeds there is such a strength and warranties of skill, that in my mind the worst or best exceeds? Who taught me how to make me love him more, the more I hear and see just cause of hate? Of our love what others do abhor, with others for shoulds not abhor my state. And worthiness raise it love in me, one worthy I to be beloved of we. How I fain when I of you do write, by William Shakespeare. How I fain when I of you do write, knowing a better spirit of use your name, in the praise whereof spends all its might to make my tongue tight speaking of your fame. But since your worth, wide as the ocean is, Barmel as the proudest sail of beer, so as you bark and fear far to hiss, when your board may dove willfully appear. Your showest help will hold me up afloat, but see upon your sound as deep of right. Or being wrecked, I am a worthless boat, he of tall building and of goodly pride. When if you thrive and I be cast away, the worst was this, my love was my decay. Oh, how well worth of manners may I sing, by William Shakespeare. A hower worth of manners may I sing, and word all the better part of me. What can mine own praise to mine own self bring? What it's but mine own when I praise thee? Even for this letter's divided live, now a dear love loose name of signal one, that by this separation I may give it you to be, which draw deserves the loan. Absence what a torment woulds for proof, word not thy sore laser give sweet leaf, to entertain the time the thoughts of love, which time and thoughts are sweetly doth deceive, and what teachest how to make one train, by praising him here would of hence remain. O oh, me, what eyes have love put in my head, by William Shakespeare. O oh, me, what eyes have love put in my head, which have no correspondence of true sight. Or if they have, where's my judgment fled, that sends us falsely what we see aright? If it be fair where on my faults I doubt, what means the world to say it is not so? If it be not, when love doth well denote, love's eye is not so true as all men's know. How can it, or how can love's eye be true, that is so vexed with watching and with tears? No more than thought I mistake my view, the sun itself sees not, till heaven clears. O cunning love, with tears what keeps me blind, lest eyes, well seeing, thy full faults should find. Or never say that I was false of heart, O William Shakespeare. Or never say that I was false of heart, I absence seemed my flame to qualify, as easy might for myself depart, as for my soul which in the breast of life. That is my home of love. If I have ranged like him that travels, I return again, just to the time, and with the time exchanged, so that myself bring water for my stain.
never believe, when my nature reigned all frailties with beseech or kinds of blood, but it could so preposterously be stained to leave for nothing or with some of good, for nothing with what universe I call, save for my rose, in it for art my all. Oh, that you were yourself, but love you are, William Shakespeare. Oh, that you were yourself, but love you are no longer yours when you yourself here live. Against this coming end you should prepare in your sweet semblance to some other gift. So should the beauty which you hold and lease find no determination, and you will yourself again after your safety keys, when your sweet issue your sweet form should bear, who lets a fair house fall to decay, which husbandly in honour might uphold against the stormy gusts of winter's day, and the enrage of death's eternal cold? Or none but upthrifts, dear my love, you know, you're the father, let your son say so. Poor soul, the centre of my sinful earth, by William Shakespeare. Poor soul, the centre of my sinful earth, my sinful earth with rebel poets array, why does for pine within and suffer death, painting where outward walls so costly gay? Why so large cost, having so short a lease, does for upon the fading mansion spend, shall warmth and heritage of his excess eat up by charge? Is this by body's end? And so live thou upon thy servant's loss, and let the pine aggravate thy store. By terms divine and selling hours of dross, then be fed, without be rich no more. So show thou fed on death, that feeds on man, and death once dead, is no more dying when. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? By William Shakespeare. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? What more lovely and more temperate? Rough winds to shake the darling buds of May, and summer's leaves have all too short a date. Sometimes the hot the eye of heaven shines, and often is the cold complexion dimmed, and the fair for fair sometimes declines by chance or nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal summer shall not fade, nor lose possession of that fair for oust, nor shall death break the wondrous in a shade, when in eternal lines to time were grows. So long as man can breathe, for eyes can see, so long lives this, and this gives life to thee. Say that thou didst forsake me for some fault, by William Shakespeare. Say that thou didst forsake me for some fault, and I will command upon the defence. Speak of my lameness, and a straight will hold against the reasons making no defence. Or canst not laugh, disgrace me half so ill, to sit the form upon desire, change as I myself disgrace, knowing the will, I will acquaint the stranger and look strange, be absent from the walks and in my tongue, my sweet beloved. Nay, no more shall dwell, lest I, too much profane, should do it wrong, and hardly of our old acquaintance tell. For we against myself I vow debate, for I must ne'er love him whom thou dost hate. Sigh no more, by William Shakespeare. Sigh no more, ladies, sigh no more, men will deceive us ever. One foot at sea and one on shore, do one thing constant never. And sigh not so, but let them go, and be your blith and bony, converting all your sounds of woe into a nonny nonny. Sing no more ditties, sing no more, of dumps so dull and heavy, a fraud of man was ever so, since summer first was levy. Then sigh not so, but let them go, and be your blith and bony, converting all your sounds of woe into a nonny nonny. Sin of self-love possesseth all mine eye, by William Shakespeare. Sin of self-love possesseth all my eye, on my soul, nor my every part, for this is sin, there is no remedy. It is so grown it inlet my heart. Methinks no face so gracious is as mine, no shape so true, no truth of such account. For myself mine own worth to define, as I all other in all worths as surmount. And my glass shows me myself indeed, beaded and shed with tenant integrity, and own self are quite contrary I read, self so self loving with iniquity. Tis we myself, and for myself I praise. Paint my age with beauty of my days. Since I left you, my eyes in my mind, by William Shakespeare. Since I left you, my eyes in my mind, and that which governs me to go about, to have part as function, and is partly blind, seems seeing, but effectually is out. Fate no form delivers to the heart of bird or flower, or shape which it doth fledge. Of us quick objects have a mind no part, and us own vision holds what is doth catch. For if it see the rudest or gentle sigh, the most sweet favour or the form's creature, the mountain or the sea, the day or night, the crow or dove, it shapes them to a feature, incapable of more, replete with you, my most true mind was make of mine untrue. So are you to my thoughts as foot to life, William Shakespeare. So are you to my thoughts as foot to life, or as sweet season showers out of the ground, 
and for the peace of you I hold such a strife as tricks to miser and its wealth is found. And a proud as an enjoyer at an adopting the filching age will steal his treasure. Now counting best to be with you alone, than that I where the world may see my pleasure. Sometimes all for the feasting on your side, and by and by clean starved for a look, possessing or pursuing no delight, save what is had, or must from you be took. Thus do I pine its fate day by day, or gluttoning on all, or all away. So now I have confessed that he is vine, by William Shakespeare. So now I have confessed that he is vine, and I myself am mortal gauge to my will. Myself I thought of fate, so that other mine were would restore to be my comfort still. But woe will not, nor he will not be free, for woe are covetous and he is kind. He learned by surety like to write for me, and that bond that him as fist doth bind. The statue of the beauty we will take, for assure that puttest forth all to use, and you a friend come debtor for my sake. So my lose through my unkind abuse. Him have I lost, or was both him and me. He pays the whole, and yet am I not free. So shall I live, supposing the word true, by William Shakespeare. So shall I live, supposing the word true, like a deceived husband. So love's face may still seem love to me, while it had new. But looks with me, a heart in other place, where I can live no hatred in thine eyes, therefore in that I care not now by change. And many the looks, the thorns heart's history, as the written moods, and frowns, and wrinkles strange. But heaven and thy creation did decree that in the face sweet love should ever dwell. Whatever thy thoughts or my heart's working be, thy looks should nothing whence but sweetness tell. Or like east apple doth a beauty grow, if a sweet virtue answer not thy show. Some glory in the birth, some in the skill, by William Shakespeare. Some glory in the birth, some in the skill, some in the wealth, some in the body's force. Some in the garments were newfangled ill, some in the hawks and hounds, some in the horse. And every humour hath its adjunct pleasure, when it finds the joy above for rest, but these particulars are not my measure. All we are better in one general best. A love is better than high birth to me, richer when wealth, prouder than garments costs, of more delight than hawks and horses be. And having thee, of all man's pride, a boast wretched in this alone, that thou mayst take, all this away, and me most wretched make. Song of the Witches by William Shakespeare Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron barbel, fillet of a fanny snake, or cauldron boil and bake. I have newt and tower frog, all of bed and ton of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and howlet's wing, for charm of powerful trouble, like a help of boil and barbel. Double, double toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron barbel. Cool it with the bourbon's blood, when the charm is firm and good. Spring and Winter by William Shakespeare When daisies peered and violets blue, and ladies smocks on silver white, and cocoa buds of yellow hue to paint the meadows with delight, the cocoa when on every tree mocks married men, or was sing see cocoa. Cocoa, cocoa, a word of fear, unpleasing to a married ear. When shepherds pipe on outen straws, and merry larks are plowmen's clocks, when turtles street and rooks and doors, and maidens bleach their summer smocks, the cuckoo when on every tree mocks married men of us sing see, cuckoo, 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 a word of fear, and pleasing to a married ear. Sweet love, renew thy force, by William Shakespeare. Sweet love, renew thy force, be it not said, thy edge should blunter be than appetite, which but today by feeding is late, to morrow sharpened in his former mind. So laugh, be thou, all what to day will fill the hungry eyes, even till the wink of fullness to morrow see again, or do not kill the spirit of love with a perversal dullness. And every sad and turmoil like the ocean be, which parts the shore of two contracted new come daily to the banks, that when they see return of love, or blessed may be the view. As call it winter, which being full of care, makes summer's welcome thrice more wished, more rare. Take all my loves, my love, yet take them all, by William Shakespeare. Take all my loves, my love, yet take them all. What hast thou then more than thou hadst before? Now love, my love, that thou mayst true love call. All mine was wine before heads this more. And if for my love, or my love receivest, I cannot blame thee, for my love thou usest. But yet be blamed, if thou thyself deceivest, the willful taste of what thyself refusest. I do forgive thy robbery, gentle thief, all thou steal thee all my poverty. 
Yet love knows it is a greater grief to be a love that wrong than hates on injury. The shivious grace whom all ill will shows kill me with spites that we must not be foes. Expense of spirit and a waste of shame by William Shakespeare. Expense of spirit and a waste of shame as lust in action and till action, lust is predatory, murderous, bloody full of blame, savage, extreme, rude, cruel, not to trust. Enjoyed no sooner but this pious grave, straight past reason hunted and no sooner had past reason hated as swallowed bait, on purpose late to make the taker mad, mad pursuit and possession so, had having and in quest to have extreme, a bliss in proof and proof to the woe before a joy proposed behind a dream. All this world we knows, yet none knows the way to shun the heaven that leads man through this hell. The devoured blame shall not be wide effect, by William Shakespeare. The devoured blame shall not be wide effect, for slender's mark was ever yet the fair, the ornament of beauty is suspect, and crowed flies in heaven's sweetest air. So all be good, slender dove by the proof, were worth a greater being wood of time, for king our vice the sweetest buds of love, and the presentest the pure unstained prime. Who has passed by the ambush of young days, either not assailed or victor being charged. Yet this by praise cannot be so by praise to tie up envy ever more enlarged. If some suspect of ill mast not thy show, and thou alone kingdoms of hearts shouldst owe. That thou hast her, it is not all my grief, by William Shakespeare. That thou hast her, it is not all my grief, yet it may be said I love her dearly. But she half fears of my wailing chief, a loss and love that touches me more nearly. Loving offenders, thus they will excuse me. For does love her because for no I love her? For my sake, even so doth she abuse me, suffering my friend for my sake to approve her. If I lose thee, my loss is my love's gain, and losing her, my friend, have found with loss. Both find each other, and I lose both train, and both for my sake lay on me this cross. But here is the joy, my friend and I are one, sweet flattery when she laughs but me alone. The time of year thou mayst may behold, by William Shakespeare. The time of year thou mayst may behold, mere leaves or none or few to hang upon those boughs which shake against the cold, where ruin choirs where late the sweet birds sing. And we will cease the twilight of such day, as after sunset fadeth in the west, which by and by black night doth take away, and have second self that seals up all in rest. And me will cease the glowing of such fire, when the ashes of his youth to fly, as the deathbed we own it must expire, consumed with that which it was nourished by. Tis what perceivest which makes the love more strong, to love it well which one must leave a law. That you were once unkind befriends me, by William Shakespeare. That you were once unkind befriends me now, and for that sorrow which I when did feel, needs must I under my transgression bow, as my nerves or brass or hammered steel. If you were by my unkindness shaken, as I by yours, would have passed the hell of time, and I had turned, have no leisure taken, to weigh how once I suffered in your crime. Oh, that our night of woe might have remembered, my deepest sense of heart through sore hits, and soon to you, as you to me then, tendered the humble self, which wounded bosoms fits. And whether your trespass now becomes a fee, and ransom yours, and yours must ransom me. The Blossom by William Shakespeare On a day, a luck of a day, Love was man for ever may, spite a blossom passing fair, playing in the wanton air. For well the leaves of wind all unseen gain passage find, when the lover, sick to death, wish himself a heaven's breath. Ere quoth ye, thy cheeks may blow, ere would I might try so. But I lack my hand is worn, and I do pluck thee from my thorn. Bow luck for youth and meat, youth so apt to pluck a sweet. Do not call it sin in me, that I am forsworn for we. Both for whom in Jofoot's were Juno but were, and now himself for truth, turning mortal for my love. The little love god lying once asleep, by William Shakespeare. The little love god lying once asleep, laid by his side his heart and flame brand, whilst so many nymphs that vowed chaste life to keep came tripping by, but in a maiden hand the fairest votary took up that fire which many legions of true hearts had warmed, and so a general of hot desire was leaving with her virgin hand disarmed. This brand she quenched in a cool well by, which from love's fire took heat perpetual, growing above and healthful remedy for man is cased. But I am a mistress frail, can therefore cure, and this by that I prove. Thus fire heats water, water cools not love. The other two, slight air and purging fire, by William Shakespeare. The other two, slight air and purging fire, are both we wherever I abide. 
the first my thought, the other my desire, this present absent with swift motion slight. But when these quicker elements are gone, and tender embassy of love to we, my life being made of four, of two alone, sinks down to death, oppressed with melancholy, until life's composition be recured by those swift messengers return from we, or even but now come back again, assured of a fair health, recounting it to me. This told I joy, but when no longer glad, I send them back again and straight grow sad. The Quality of Mercy by William Shakespeare The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. It is mightiest than the mightiest. It becomes a throned monarch better than his crown. A sceptre shows a force of temporal power. The attribute to all in majesty, when thou sit with dread and fear of kings. And mercy is above the sceptre's way. It is enthroned in the heart of kings. It is an attribute to God himself. An earthly power, though when shall like his gods, and mercy seasons justice. Then hate me when thou wilt, by William Shakespeare. Then hate me when thou wilt, if ever, now. Now while the world is bent my deeds to cross, Join with a spite of fortune, make me bow, and do not drop in for an after loss. I do not in my heart have scaped with sorrow, come the reward of a conquered woe. Give not a windy night, a rainy morning, to linger out a purpose overthrow. If thou wilt leave me, do not leave me at last, and have a pretty griefs have done their spite, but in the onset come, so shall I taste at first the very worst of fortune's might. And have a strains of woe which now seem woe compared with loss of weal and not seem so. They that have power to hurt and will do none, by William Shakespeare. They that have power to hurt and will do none, they do not do the thing they must to show. Who, moving others, are themselves a stone, and moved coward and do temptation slow. They rightly do inherit heaven's graces and husband nature's riches from expense. They are the lords and owners of their faces, others but stewards of their excellence. The summer's flower is to the summer sweet, though to itself it only live and die. But if it flow with base infection meet, the basest wheat outbraves his dignity. The sweetest things turn sewers by their deeds, lilies that fester smell far worse than weeds. Was ours that a gentle work did frame for William Shakespeare. Was ours that of gentle work did frame the lovely gaze where every eye doth dwell, or play the tyrants to the very same, and when unfair which fairly doth excel? For never resting time leads summer on, to hideous winter confounds him there. Except check with frost and lust, their leaves quite gone, beauties are snowed and banners everywhere. And were not summer's distillation left, a liquid prisoner painted in walls of glass, beauties affect with beauty that bereft, nor it nor no remembrance what it was. But flowers distilled, what with the winter meet, least but per show, a substance still lives sweet. Those lines that I before have writ do lie, by William Shakespeare. Those lines that I before have writ do lie, even those that said I could not love you dearer. Yet when my judgment knew no reason why, my most full flame should afterwards burn clearer, but reckoning time was million and accidents, creep in twixt woes and change decrees of kings. Than sacred beauty than the sharpest intents, David strong minds to the cause of altering things. Alas, why, fearing of time's tyranny, might I not then say, Now I love you best? And I was certain no uncertainty, crowning the present, doubting of the rest. Love is a babe, and might I not say so, to give for growth to wed which still doth grow? Those pretty wrongs that liberty commits, by William Shakespeare. Those pretty wrongs that liberty commits, but I am sometime absent from the heart, a beauty in the years full well befits, for still temptation follows where thou art, gentle thou art, and wherefore to be won, beauteous thou art, before to be assailed, when a woman woos, a woman's son will surely leave her till he hath prevailed. I mean, but yet for mites my seed for beer, and chide for beauty in the straying youth, or let thee in the riot even there, where thou art forced to break a twofold truth. Hers, by the beauty tempting her to thee, thine, by the beauty being false to me. For blind fool, love, for dost thou to mine eyes, by William Shakespeare. For blind fool, love, for dost thou to mine eyes, that they behold and see not what they see. They know what beauty is, see where it lies, yet what the best is take the worst to be. If I scur up by over partial looks, be anchored in the bay where all men ride, and why of eyes falsehood hast thou forked hooks, or to the judgment of my heart is tied? 
Why should my heart think that there's ever a plot which my heart knows the white world's common place? Am I nigh seeing this, say this is not to put fair truth upon so fool a face? And things that I through my heart and eyes have erred, and to this false plague are they now transferred? Thus can my love excuse the slow offence of William Shakespeare. Thus can my love excuse the slow offence of my dull bearer, and from we are sweet. Where were art, I should have haste me whence. Till I return, of posting is no need. Or what excuse when my poor beast can find, when swift extremity can seem but slow, and should I swear the mounted on the wind, and winged speed no motion shall I know, and can no horse of my desire keep pace, therefore desire of perfect love being made, shall nigh not thy flesh and his fire race, but love for love I shall excuse my jade, and some be going he when willful slow, towards we I'll run, and give him leave to go. Tired with all these, for rest for death I cry, William Shakespeare. Tired with all these, a restful death I cry, to behold desert a beggar born, and needing nothing trimmed in jollity, and purest faith unhappily forsworn, and gilded honour shamefully misplaced, and maiden virtue rudely strumpeted, and ripe perfection wrongfully disgraced, and strength by limping sway disabled, and art made untied by authority, and folly dogged like controlling skill, and simple truth with court simplicity, and kept of good attaining Captain ill. Tired with all these, of these would I be gone, save that to die, and leave my love alone. Tis better to be wild than vile esteemed, by William Shakespeare. Tis better to be wild than vile esteemed, than not to be received reproach of being, and the just pleasure lost, which is so deemed, not by our feeling, but by our seeing. For why should others' thoughts adultery eyes give salutations to my sport of blood? On my frailties, why a frailer spice, which my wills count bad, what I think good? Or I am that I am, and they that level my abuses reckoning up their own, and may be strayed for way themselves be bevel. By the ring forts, my deeds must not be shown, unless this general either they maintain, or men are bad, and in their badness reign. To be or not to be, by William Shakespeare. To be or not to be, that is the question. If it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and errors of what reaches fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles and by opposing anthem, to die to sleep no more, and by sleep to say we end the heartache and the foes and natural shocks it flashes her to, it is a consumption devoutly to be wished. To die to sleep to sleep, perchance to dream, a vers for up, for in with sleep of death what dreams may come, and we have shuffled of a mortal coil, must give us pause. There's a respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressors wrong, the problems quantumly, the pangs of despised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office and the spurns, the patient merit of the unworthy takes, and he himself might be quite a smeg of the bare wood. Who would for dead's beard to grant and sweat under a very life, and the dread of something after death, the undiscovered country, from whose burn the traveller returns, puzzles the will, and makes us rather be of those ills we have, and fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscious does make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sickly an oath the pale cast of fault, and their prizes of great pith and moment, if his regard their currents turn awry and lose the name of action. Soft, you know, be fair of failure, nymph in thy horizons, you are my sins remembered. To me, fair friend, you never can be old. William Shakespeare. To me, fair friend, you never can be old. Whereas you were when first your eye eyed, such seems your beauty still. The winter's cold, and from the forest shock free summer's pride, the beauteous springs to yellow autumn turned, and process of the seasons have I seen, free your perfumes and free your junes burned, since first I saw you fresh, which yet are green. A yet of beauty like a dial hand, see from his figure, and no pace perceived. So your sweet hue, which me thinks did of stand, of motion, and mine eye may be deceived, for fear of which he is for age unbreed. Ere you were born was beauty summer dead. Twelve o'clock by William Shakespeare. Through the house give glimmering light by the dead and rosy fire. Every the elf and fairy spirit hop as light as bird from bright, no until the break of day from this house each fairy stray. Under the greenwood tree by William Shakespeare. And the greenwood tree, who loves to lie with me, and turn his merry note unto the sweet bird's throat, come higher, come higher, come higher. Here shall he see not enemy but winter and rough weather. 
who doth impatience shun and loves to live by the sun, seeking the food he eats and pleasure of what he gets. Come hither, come hither, come hither, ye shall he see no enemy but winter and rough river. Well, with toil, I haste me to my bed. William Shakespeare. Well, with toil, I haste me to my bed. Dear repose for limbs with travel tired. But when begins a journey in my head, to work my mind, and what is work expired? When my thoughts, how far will I abide, and enter zealous pilgrimage to we, and keep my drooping eyelids open wide, looking on darkness which will blind to see? Safe at my soul's imaginary sight, a presence was shed to my sightless view, which like a jewel hung in ghastly night, make black night beauteous and the old face new. Love us by day my limbs, by night my mind, for we and for myself not quite find. What is your substance? Wherefore are you made? William Shakespeare. What is your substance? Wherefore are you made? With millions of strange shadows on your tent. Since every one half, every one one shade, and you but one can every shadow lend. Describe Adonis and the counterfeit as poorly imitated after you. On Helen's cheek, all out of beauty set, and you in Grecian tires are painted new. Speak of a spring and fortune of a year, to one of shadow of your beauty show, the other as your bounty doth appear. And only of your blessed shape we know. In all external grace you have some part, but you like none, none you, for constant heart. What's in the brain that ink my character? William Shakespeare. What's in the brain that ink my character, which have not figured to be my true spirit? What's new to speak, but now to register, that may express my love or my dear merit? Nothing, sweet boy, but yet, like prayers divine, I must each day say all the very same, counting the old thing old, for mine I vine, even as when first I hollowed my fair name. So that eternal love and love's fresh case, waste not the dust and injury of age, nor gives the necessary wrinkles place, but makes antiquity for eyes page, finding the first conceit of love their bread, where time and outward form would show it dead. When forty winters shall besiege my bro, by William Shakespeare. When forty winters shall besiege my bro, and dig deep trenches in the beauty's field, I use proud liveries so gay to know, we tattered wheat of small worth held. When being asked where the beauty lies, where the treasure of her lusty days, to save within thine own deep sunken eyes, were an all eating shame and thriftless praise, how much more praise deserve the beauty's use if thou couldst answer, This fair child of mine shall sum my count and make me old excuse, proving his beauty by succession thine. If it were to be new made and word old, and see the blood warm and thou feelst it cold. When I consider everything that grows, by William Shakespeare, and I consider everything that grows holds in perfection by the little moment, if this huge stage presenteth naught but shows from the stars and secret influence command, and I perceive that man as plans increase, cheered and checked even by the self same sky, worn in the beautiful sap at high decrease, and with a brave state out of memory, and the conceit of his inconstant stay sets you most rich in youth before my sight. Where wasteful time, the baketh of decay, I change your day of youth to solid night, and all in war with time for love of you, as it takes from you, I engraft you new. When I do count the clock that tells the time, by William Shakespeare, when I do count the clock that tells the time, and see the brave day sunk in hideous night, and behold the violet past prime, and sable curls all silvered o'er with white, one of the trees is he barren of leaves, which earth from heat that cannot by the hurt, and some screen all girded up in sheaves, born of briar with white and bursty beard. And of her beauty do I question make, at though among the wastes of time must go, since sweet and beauties do themselves forsake, and I as fast as ways see others grow. And I think hence time's gift can make defence a safe breed, to brave him when he takes thee hence. When in the Chronicle of Wasted Time, by William Shakespeare, when in the Chronicle of Wasted Time, I see descriptions of affairs so wise, beauty making beautiful old rhyme, and praise of ladies dead and lovely nights, when the blazon of sweet beauty's best, of hand, of foot, of lip, of eye, of brow, I see the antique pen would have expressed even such a beauty as you master now. So all the praises are but prophecies, of a third time all you prefiguring, and for the looked but with divining eyes, we had no skill enough your worth to sing, for we which know we hold these present days, have eyes to wonder, but like tons to praise. When most I wing, when do my eyes best see, by William Shakespeare. When most I wing, when do mine eyes best see, for all the day they view things unrespected. When I sleep in dreams, they look on we, and darkly bright, a bright and dark directed. And though with shadows, shadows doth make bright, 
How would thy shadows form, form happy show to the clear day, with thy much clearer light? And do unseeing eyes thy shade shine so? How would, I say, mine eyes be blessed, made by looking on thee in the living day, and in that night, thy fair imperfect shade, through heavy sleep on sightless eyes doth stay? All days and nights, to see till I see thee, all nights bright days, when dreams do show thee me. When woe shall be disposed to set me light, by William Shakespeare. And woe shall be disposed to set me light, and place my merit in the eye of scorn. Upon thy sight, against myself I'll flight, and prove you virtuous, a war art forsworn. With mine own weakness being best acquainted, upon my part I can set down a story, of faults concealed, wherein I am attained, that one losing me should win much glory. And either this will be a gainer too, for bending all my loving thoughts on thee, the injuries that to myself I do, doing thee vantage, double vantage me. Such is my love, to we as so belong, that for thy right, myself will be all wrong. Whilst I alone did call upon thy aid, but William Shakespeare, whilst I alone did call upon thy aid, my worse alone had all thy gentle grace, but now my gracious numbers are decayed, and my sick muse doth give another place. I grant sweet love, my lovely argument, deserves the travail of a worthier pen. A word of thee, the poor doth vent, he rubs you off, and pays it thee again. He lends thee virtue, and he stole the word for thy behaviour. Beauty doth he give, and found it in thy cheek. He can afford a praise to thee, at what in thee doth live. And thank him not for what which he doth say, since what he owes thee, for why self does pay. Who is it that says most, which can say more? But William Shakespeare. Who is it that says most, which can say more, and is which praise? But you alone are you, in whose confining you it, as a store which should example were your equal grew? The impugnal within the pen of the well, and to his subject lends not some small glory. But he that writes of you, if he can tell, but you are you, so dignifies his story. Let him but copy what in you is writ, not making words for nature made so clear, and such a counterpart will frame his wit, making style admired everywhere. You to your beauteous blessings add a curse, being a fond and praise, which makes your praises worse. Who will believe my worse in time to come? By William Shakespeare. Who will believe my worse in time to come, if it were filled with your most high deserts? Or mm. well, yet heaven knows it is but a tomb, which hides your life, and shows not half your parts. If I could write the beauty of your eyes, and in fresh numbers number all your graces, the age to come would say, This poet lies. Such heavenly touches ne'er touched earthly faces. So should my papers, yellowed with the age, be scorned like old man of less truth and ton, and your true rights be termed a poet's rage, and stretched metre of an antique song. And where some child of yours life time, you should live thrice, in it and in my rhyme. Whoever half her wish, or has her will, by William Shakespeare. Whoever half her wish, or has her will, and will to boot and will an overplus. More than enough am I that vex be still, to thy sweet will making addition was. Will the woe, whose will is large and spacious, not once for chafe to hide my will in wine. Shall will in others seem right gracious, and in my will no fair acceptance shine? The sea full water, yet receives rain still, and in abundance addeth to a store. So for being rich and will add to thy fill, one will of mine to make thy large will more. Let no unkind, no fair beseechers kill, Think all but one, and me in that one will. Why didst thou promise such a beauteous day? William Shakespeare. Why didst thou promise such a beauteous day? Make her travel forth without my cloak, let place clouds or take me in my way, hiding the bravery in a rotten smoke. Tis not enough that through the cloud for break, to drive the rain on my storm beaten face, when all one will of such itself can speak that he its bone and cures not the disgrace. Nor can thy shame give physic to my grief. Of all repent, yet I have still the loss. The offender so lends but weak relief to him that bears the strong offences cross. Ah, but those tears are pearl which my love sheds, and they are rich and ransom all ill deeds. William Shakespeare's epitaph by William Shakespeare. Good friend, for Jesus' sake, forbear to take the dust enclosed here. Blessed be the man that spares these stones, and cursed be he that moves my bones.